Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas and in this video I'm going to show you a piece of software that works on both Mac and PC that will allow you to natively browse popular cloud storage platforms. Okay, so a few videos back, I showed you how to get up and running with kind of the basics of using uh, a third-party storage, cloud storage service like Backblaze. Backblaze is great. One of the things that I covered in that video uh, in particular is that it is significantly cheaper than services like Amazon S3 or even Dropbox or something like that. And the great thing about Backblaze as well is that from my experience, it seemed to be a lot easier to use. One of the challenges, however, if you're going to try to use one of these third party cloud storage services is connecting to them and using them more casually or uh, kind of on a day to day basis. One of the things that I covered in that previous video, which I will leave a link below, and I think there should be a title that appears somewhere above. But one of the challenges that we have to face is using a third party client connection client, something like transmit, which is only for a Mac or you have to use their web browse or their actual web uh, interface to connect and upload and download files. For most of us, however, this poses a little bit of a challenge. So today I wanted to show you some software that I recently came across. And this one does work on a Mac as well as a PC that allows you to mount your cloud service as, as though it were an external drive on your computer. So on a Mac, you know, if you plug in an external hard drive, you've got a little disk utility or disk icon that appears in your sidebar uh, and possibly on your desktop as well, showing that you've connected that drive. What this app will enable you to do, and again, this works both on the Mac or a PC, is you'll be able to connect to Dropbox, you'll be able to connect to Box or uh, you know Amazon S3. You can also connect, like I said, to Backblaze or even FTP. So if you're kind of a little bit more hands-on with your website and you wanna be able to directly access the files on your web server as though it were a drive on your computer, this app will allow you to do that too. One of the things as well that this app will allow you to do is it will allow you to connect to Dropbox. I recently had, uh, I actually got rid of an account, a Teams account that I had with Dropbox. And I still have a Dropbox account, but I've downgraded to just the free tier that I just use kind of sporadically here and there. One of the reasons I decided to stop depending upon Dropbox primarily was one, I noticed that it was consuming a large amount of uh, computer space or a lot of CPU. It was very memory intensive. So it was one of those things that I wanted to cut back on part, primarily because I didn't find myself in need of the syncing part of the of Dropbox quite as much. Using this app, however, what it enables you to do is direct uh, directly connect to your Dropbox account. So you don't have to worry with Dropbox's software. You can just use this and you can drag and drop or move or delete files directly on your Dropbox without having to go through the process of syncing. Okay, so that's a lot of kind of the explanation. Let's go ahead and dive in real quick and take a quick peek uh, at what this app looks like and what it enables us to do. Okay, so once you've successfully installed the software, what you'll see here is that it's going to create this nice little icon up here at the top. Uh, menu bar of your Mac. And this is going to be a nice little drop down where you can actually see some of the features. What you're going to want to do first of all though is you want to click new drive and then it's going to show you all the different types of drives that you can connect to. So like I said previously, if you have a web server that you have access to and you want to be able to access uh, the FTP or SFTP, you can do that. You can connect to Amazon S3. You can also connect to Backblaze as we covered in a previous video with a different client. Uh, OpenStack, Swift, you can do Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, all these different forms of drives that can appear in your sidebar. So once you've added them, I won't actually go through the process of adding them, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go through, fill out the different particular fields that you would need in order to uh, access that particular type of drive. But once you've successfully connected, you can actually see them over here on the left-hand sidebar. Uh, you can also see them by clicking up here and you'll, you'll notice here there's a little icon or a little dot that appears next to them and that's when they're mounted. So the whole idea of something being mounted just means that it is accessible to you. So like for example, you can plug in a drive into your computer if it's an external drive and it will mount, meaning that it's accessible. But then what you can do is you can click to unmount it. It'll still be plugged into your computer 
However, it will no longer be accessible. It is as though you, un, you uh, unplugged it. It's just that you're unmounting it. So the same type of concept uh, applies here. So you see up here, I have mounted my Backblaze account and I have not mounted uh, my um, Dropbox and I have not mounted this particular web server. So what you can do here is you can just click this mount button. One of the other things that you can do once you've already mounted it, we can open up our nice little finder window here. As we can see, once it's mounted, it'll show up here in the left hand and you can drag it around just as you would any other drive. So if we click in here, you'll see it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's what you're totally used to within a uh, normal file system on your computer. It's just right now I am browsing through my Backblaze storage. So again, if we're to go up here, you can also go over to this little menu and you can say show in Finder and that will also take you to this particular drive. We see that it's showing up here as though it were a drive. So all I would have to do is click this little button here and just see that it unmounts instantly. It's as though I've unmounted that drive. Then if I wanted to access it again, I could just jump over here, hover over, click mount, and you'll see that it automatically mounts and then it opens. So once again, you can see it works. Since you are working, this is uh, going to be storage that is off of your computer. It's going to be totally reliant upon your internet speeds. So see here, I'm gonna be uploading file that is now being uploaded uh, to my particular uh, Backblaze account. You'll see it shows kind of this little watch icon as it is preparing and then a little syncing icon as it is uploading and now it has fully uploaded. So one of the things I also mentioned is that you're able to go up here and connect to something like Dropbox. So again, it's going to be very similar to the Dropbox that you're used to seeing except for there's no syncing involved. So what this means is that you're working directly on the Dropbox server. So uh, if you've got Dropbox open while you're doing this, it shouldn't cause any problems, they should still sync just fine. This comes in really handy. I know I came into this uh, really kind of difficult situation where I wanted to get a large amount of files from Dropbox onto an external hard drive and my computer hard drive isn't big enough to accommodate all those files. So what I had to do was sync one big file, move it to the hard drive, one big file, move it to the hard drive. With something like this, you can access your Dropbox account directly on the server. So you can just take a big file, drag it to your external hard drive, and that copying process can be taken care of for you. Okay, so as you can see here, not too much to see. It's just a giant uh, collection of files and folders that is going to be prevalent on any Dropbox account. As you can see, it's going to be that same uh, style as you would see with something like Backblaze. Then if we're to jump on over, this is one of my web servers that I use over at Cloudways. You could do the same thing if you use Bluehost or if you use WP Engine or HostGator. If you wanna be able to access your server files specifically, obviously you wanna proceed with caution if you're not a web developer, but if you ever need to for whatever reason, you can do that as well. So go ahead and click mount. Give that a second to actually mount, and then we'll see that it has mounted. So this is my Cloud Cloudways account. I can go into all of the different sites that I have hosted there and access them as though it were FTP. Okay, so if you are gonna be using something like Backblaze, there are a few limitations that you would have if you were using something like Transmit on a Mac. So if I were to go in here, this the particular bucket I have is where I store kind of all my shared files that I share with people. You can't really right click and get the URL for this. One of the nice things about Transmit is that if you're going to be using Backblaze and you wanna specifically share files, it's a little bit easier here because you can then navigate over using Transmit go in here, hit right click, and then copy the URL. That's really handy because that means that you can just really quickly and easily get that shareable URL, which is a little bit quicker than going over onto their web browser. If you're not gonna be doing a lot of sharing or you don't need a lot more robust features, then using this app is gonna be great because you're gonna be able to mount these as drives and then start working directly in them. Okay, so one of the things you might be wondering is what would this be useful for? I kind of touched on it at the beginning, but the reason why this would be so useful, particularly if you're gonna use something like Backblaze, is that their storage is so affordable. So if you're working with less than a terabyte of data, you're gonna be spending under, under $100 a year for that storage, which is significantly less than something like Amazon S3 or something like Dropbox. So the great thing that this comes in handy for is, especially if you just mount it as a drive on your computer, you can just access it when you need to. 
obviously you'll have to have internet access or you're not gonna be able to access your files. So that is one limitation, but it's great if you have a smaller hard drive and you don't wanna have to lug around a bunch of external hard drives. Once you've got big files that you no longer need, you can just upload them to your Backblaze or to your Box or to your Google Drive using this app and you don't have to worry about the headache of working with a different file browser that you're not as used to. Okay, so I know this is a little bit of a shorter video, a quicker tip, but I wanted to share that with you uh, mainly because I know it saved me a lot of time, so hopefully it'll also save you time as well. I typically cover primarily Mac apps on this channel when it comes to productivity software. However, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a software that's gonna work both on a Mac and a PC. I believe it also works on Linux, and I think they're currently developing an iOS app and an Android app as well. So it looks like it's only moving up from here. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.